Off to the end zone, which is fought for by Tate with Jennings simultaneous. Who has it? Well, somebody you know is reacting to that. You might call it the play seen and call heard around the world. Now at 4 o'clock, the fallout out of the, over the now-dubbed touchception and the lingering impact on the Las Vegas sportsbooks. And faking the grade, the growing pressure of standardized testing, how students are performing, and the extra effort made to prevent cheating. Now, breaking news from Channel 8 News Now. We're going to have those stories in just a moment, but first we do begin with breaking news. An NV Energy worker has died after falling 100 feet from a tower. Late this afternoon, NV Energy releasing this statement. It says, our hearts are heavy as we mourn the loss of one of our NV Energy family members today. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family, friends, and colleagues. The 28-year-old man was flown to the hospital after his fall, which happened near US 93 west of Apex Industrial Park. He later died. The a man who admitted to being intoxicated when he hit and killed a 12-year-old last year will remain behind bars. Justin Karamanica was in court this morning to answer to uh, new DUI charges. The 42-year-old was arrested over the weekend after he hit a parked car this time. The new charges include driving on a revoked license, no proof of insurance, and failure to drive within marked lines. He was free while waiting to be sentenced in November for last year's deadly crash, but now that's changed. All right, whether you watch football or not, or even like it, here is something that everybody's talking about. It was the final seconds of last night's game. Until last night, really, the labor dispute between the NFL and the Referees Association seemed to be just that, just a labor dispute. But when a disputed call between referees resulted in the Seahawks winning last night's game 14-12 to 12, in the last seconds, mm -hmm. fans and players made it clear they've had enough. All right, so despite the protests from the fans, and then there was all this confusion, the NFL upheld the Seahawks' 14-12 to 12 win over the Green Bay Packers on Monday Night Football. Off to the end zone, which is fought for by Tate with Jennings simultaneous. Who has it? The league said in a statement today that Seattle's last second touchdown pass should not, should not have been overturned. The NFL says Seahawks receiver Golden Tate should have been called for offensive pass interference before the catch, which would have meant the Packers would have won the game, but that... That offensive pass interference cannot be reviewed by instant replay. The replacement officials, the ones working while the real ones are locked out, ruled on the field that Tate had simultaneous possession with MD Jennings, which counts as a reception for the offense. The NFL says once that happened, the referee was correct. Crazy ending. So all that being said, really doesn't change the lingering impact of the game. And when it comes to the betting world, it was a tough one. Yes, the estimates vary, but anywhere from 12 to 15 million dollars was wagered in Nevada sports books on this one game, and up to 400 million dollars worldwide. Eight News Now is live with that story. Aaron Drawhorn at the LVH Sportsbook, and Aaron, uh, you're hearing from a lot of upset Packer fans, I imagine. Absolutely, Paul. Green Bay was a three-point favorite. The gamblers, who are Packers backers, should have had some money coming their way today. That did not happen. You might say they were robbed by the refs. This all led to a swing in the betting world to the tune of $300 million, we're told, when they called touchdown with that blown call last night. It took money from Packers bettors and essentially handed it over to those who bet on the Seattle Seahawks. The sports books also came out on top as well because roughly three out of four tickets were on Green Bay. This is a controversial call, no doubt about that. And the fury is felt especially hard by those who lost a lot of money on this game here in Las Vegas and all over the world. It is. It's tough to take as a gambler. You know, I can, I can handle losing. You know, you do it. You, you know, it's part of what we do. Can handle losing, but just not like that. If the Packers had won, the players would have won about 150 million. And since they lost, they lost about 150 million. So this was a 300 million dollar swing in favor of the bookies, and it was a loss for the players. Seahawks betters may have soared to some new heights with some unexpected cash, but many of them do admit that the outcome of this game was flawed. That doesn't mean they're going to turn around uh, or turn away that cash at all. Now, there's no question about it. The sports books last night here in Las Vegas did come out on top, but the vice president of race and sports operations here at the LVH Superbook says they don't like this outcome one bit, even though they came out on top last night. Some contract 
controversial outcomes in the past have uh, cost them greatly. Most recently, that uh, Pacquiao-Bradley fight that took place back here in Las Vegas in June. So uh, the controversy and the alcohol, uh, outcomes, they, they go in both ways for the sports books. Reporting live at the LVH, Aaron Drawhorn, 8 News Now. So Aaron, I think I know the answer to this question, but I have to ask it. Is there any chance that Packers fans could get uh, their money back on this bet? It depends. If you if you bet with one of these offshore outfits, uh, some of the companies are offering refunds, but here in Nevada and Las Vegas, absolutely not, Paul. There are a lot of people asking, I can tell you that, at the uh, windows behind me, but no, the regulations say you have to go with the winner of the game. That's the Nevada regulations, and they admit, you know, if they gave a refund on something like this, that would open up Pandora's box. People would want refunds for, you know, money they put in slot machines right here. Back to you. Aaron Drawhorn, thanks very much. Now, Twitter and Facebook lit up last night after that call was made. ESPN analysts stayed on the air, too, for quite some time talking about it. We wanted to share some of your comments. Jeremy wrote, it's time to get the regular refs and the league to sit at the bargaining table until something is resolved. No breaks. Just hammer it out until they get it right. And Louise wrote, the Packers got screwed. We need regular officials. These guys don't know what they're doing half the time. They're in way over their heads. Now, we we love to hear from you. Remember, you can always comment on stories that matter on our 8 News Now Facebook page. Denise. All right, different kind of pressure now, uh, this time for students who are taking tests, especially those proficiency exams. The importance of passing them can really take a toll. In fact, a recent report found test cheating in 36, 36 states, and that included right here in Nevada. Right. And Chris Aldani went out to find out what teachers and kids are trying to do about it. So go back. Remember when we'd have to take tests? It was never easy. No. And sometimes when you think, all right, now I have to graduate. If I don't pass this test, I'm not graduating. Mm -hmm. So imagine the pressure for these kids. November is when students in the Clark County School District will take their first round of proficiency tests. Students and teachers, they're already preparing for them. And when we share this new report with them, many cringe at the thought of cheating, but they're well aware that it all exists. Ashley Neby has been teaching for eight years. Today, her class, they were going over some essay skills and gearing up for the writing portion of the state proficiency exam. The Clark County School District has a zero tolerance policy when it comes to students or administrators cheating. The district says if teachers or staff are caught trying to give students a preview of the tests or skewed test results, well, those are grounds for termination. I tell them don't cheat in school, don't cheat on your taxes, and don't cheat on your significant other. And that really seems to hit home with them. And I let them know that I take cheating personally because I work so hard to make sure that they're as successful as possible. Maybe says when people are placed under an enormous amount of pressure, they get desperate, but that's no excuse. The Clark County School District does have, uh, has, hasn't had major concerns when it comes to cheating within administrators so far this year. And remember, students out there, if they are caught cheating, that is grounds for expulsion as well. Oh, that's tough. It is All tough. All right, Chris, thanks. Sure. A uh, soccer team scandal, the incident at one L.A. area high school that has parents outraged and students behind bars. And spanking at school, it may be a controversial topic for us here, but many may remember getting whipped with a paddle. We've got more on the school board meeting that caught a lot of attention. soccer scandal at one Los Angeles area high school after three teens say other players sexually assaulted them. Parents outraged over the heinous hazing incident at La Puente High School that may have also involved the coach. The teens say older players took them into a room near the coach's office and forced them to strip. Then the teens claim they were violated with the end of a javelin. The victims shared their story after having their identities concealed and their voices modified. They told me if I wanted it the easy way or the hard way, the varsity team. And like in that moment, my heart was like pounding and like, I just like kind of like blacked out. And I said, I told him, I just remember telling him I went it the easy way, but when I was gonna bend down, I tried to run, but like they got me back. This is the boys team. The teen's attorney says the hazing ritual has been going on for at least two years. Four students were arrested. Their coach is on administrative leave because he's under investigation too. Some parents in Texas are very upset because a male teacher paddled a couple of female students. That's against the rules in this district where paddling is allowed, but females must be paddled by females. So parents packed the Springtown School Board meeting last night, everybody wanting to see how the district would respond after hearing from a mother whose 16-year-old daughter was paddled maybe a little too hard. She told me the story, and I looked at her butt, and I was floored. 
the imprint of a paddle. The imprint. If I put a mark on her and send her to school, CPS is going to knock on my door. No authority, no school official should be able to bruise my child. But after hearing from parents, the district did not apologize. Instead, they simply changed their rule, allowing male staff to paddle female students as long as there's another female present. Texas is one of 19 states that still allow uh, corporal punishment in school. Nevada banned it in 1993, which means many of you may remember what the paddle looks like. It, uh, it was long and wooden. There it is. Can you see it? Long. <laughs> there it is. Okay, it's long and wooden, has holes in it, makes it aerodynamic so the principal can, you know, really get some bad head oh, speed with man. it, just like the one I was hit with for shooting spit wads in seventh grade. Did you ever spend any time in the principal's office? <laughs> well, that's kind of a personal question, isn't it? it we're, all, we're all family here. You, you know what? When you go to Catholic school and the nuns come down the, the aisle with the ruler. Oh, yeah. yeah. The rulers. Nobody misbehaves. Yeah, I yeah. bet. I bet. Darren's been a little bit trouble. I think, I think Darren's been <laughs> I was naughty. just going to say that. It was, uh, you know, Catholic school, and uh, even though that looks pretty intimidating, <laughs> but I got spanked a couple of times, but on my pant leg, you know, oh, down really? here, you know, so, you know. But uh, I've had my little troubles back in the day. This is way back in the day, right? <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, a live look outside. Well, that's wrong. There we go. Live look outside this afternoon. We had a cold front uh, that moved through last night in through this morning that really uh, produced some beautiful weather and the winds are still somewhat light outside. Uh, they've been reduced uh, because the cold front is moving farther apart and the weather outside right now is absolutely beautiful and stunning. Allergy though out there, we still got ragweed, sage and chino in the moderate to low category. Uh, reduced a little bit, but the wind out there uh, between say four and eight miles per hour, uh, we still have a little bit of pollen kind of blowing around. Look at the air quality though. You have a cold front that moves through, uh, clears out all the bad stuff. So right there, you got dust, ozone, and carbon monoxide right now in the good category. And today, uh, relatively cool outside. Most neighborhoods right now are hovering in the 80s. So 89 degrees, the current temperature out at the strip. Normal high now, by the way, is 90. Lake Mead, you're at 89. East Washington, East Domingo, a little bit warmer. You're at 92. A uh, Fort Apache, you're in the upper 80s. So look at all those 80s outside. A uh, College in 95, you're at 87. Out towards El Dorado, down towards Sahara in 15, you're at 88. And then outside the valley, you can see it's a little bit cooler up towards uh, Tonopah at 68. Uh, Mount Charleston even cooler at 63. And a little bit warm down the south, off from the current temperature at uh, 98 degrees. So there's the radar. This uh, front that moved through this morning is now uh, pushing off into Utah. And now high pressure builds in right behind that. So it looks like in the seven day forecast, we're thinking that we're done with triple digit temperatures here in Las Vegas. As we head towards the weekend with this high pressure system still kind of sticking around here, uh, the forecast is to get back up in the mid to upper 90s. So I don't think we'll hit 100, but we're going to get a little bit warmer than we should be this time of year. Normal high again is 90 degrees. As far as the rest of the nation, as far as rain goes, you got some showers over towards Denver and a cold front kind of swinging through the Ohio Valley here in the Midwest, producing scattered showers along this cold front here and then down toward the south. Some more rain heading our way uh, for Florida. Upper 60s by tomorrow morning under mostly clear skies. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday for hump day, a high of 91 degrees. It'll be absolutely beautiful. Winds on the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And there's that seven day forecast as high pressure kind of sticks around. Uh, Thursday at 93, Friday 94, and then as we head towards the weekend, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, again, as we usher in the, the first couple of days of October, uh, highs will be in the mid to upper 90s. So we should be seeing highs only at 90, that today, but high pressure still sticking around. And we have to contend with possibly getting up near 100 degrees here mm -hmm. as we head towards the weekend. Yeah, a little bit warmer than we should be, but okay. uh, still not that bad though forecast, okay? I still can't believe they hit you on your pant. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know. I was just thinking oh, the same thing. We're going to hear about this, right? <laughs> right. We all turned out okay. <laughs> yes, we did, yes. <laughs> I don't know, I'm still hurting a little bit. I have issues also. <laughs> we, we got some calls earlier about some shaking north of the Las Vegas Valley today. Uh, and if you felt it, you didn't imagine it. The U.S. Geological Survey shows a magnitude 3.8 earthquake shook the area near Moapa Town and Dry Lake just after 9 o'clock this morning. It's about 27 miles northeast of Las Vegas. There aren't any reports of damage or any injuries from the shaker. Well, Texas is ground zero for this year's West Nile outbreak. We also had at least one human case confirmed here in Clark County. The heartache felt most deeply in Texas, though, where 1,400 people have been infected and 62 have died. It was a mosquito. One mosquito took his life. I mean, that's just is unbelievable. 
Well, now there's a positive development to the effort to battle the virus in Texas. In one Texas lab, researchers believe they may have found a cure. Dr. Manjunath Swamy says he and his team have been able to kill the virus in mice. They did it by injecting microscopic strands into the bloodstreams of rodents, and it worked. We are reasonably hopeful that it will work in humans as well. Five years would be a reasonable estimate. Five years until it could be used to cure the disease in humans, he says. The Texas Tech team now preparing to seek funding and permission to eventually begin human trials. We have got some trouble right now along the uh, 15 freeway. A couple of buses may be involved in some sort of an accident right near Blue Diamond. Uh, Ken Smith is in Chopper 8 with the details for us. Ken? Yeah, it turns out it's actually going to be on Blue Diamond. That's State Road 160. It's going to be on the eastbound side just as you approach Interstate 15. Uh, we just arrived on the scene about 30 seconds ago, so we're still trying to assess things that occurred here, but it looks like we got at least one school bus that may be involved in an accident along with these two vehicles. They're blocking pretty much all the lanes except for the far right-hand lanes. So traffic has to stay right to get by. We haven't received word. Obviously, I just arrived to the scene whether or not there are any children on board. Possibly there could have been a few, but I don't see any significant damage to the bus. This could be the secondary bus to transfer students over to the second bus. Here's the traffic backup, though. We got heavy delays here along this stretch of Blue Diamond. Eastbound Blue Diamond is backed up about a half mile right now from approaching Valley View, heading out to approaching Interstate 15, so you might want to avoid this area. Let's take a look at Interstate 15 now. Always a rough spot is going to be right at I-15 around the Bonneville area. That's right at the Spaghetti Bowl. Southbound traffic a bit slow and go coming off the Spaghetti Bowl, heading down to Charleston. And our other fast camera right around Sahara. Not as bad as we've seen some afternoons on northbound I-15 here at Sahara, but you will find those light to off and on delays that will redevelop at any moment. It always does uh, between Sahara heading up to the Spaghetti Bowl. Reporting live over Blue Diamond at Interstate 15, I'm Ken Smith, 8 News Now. Construction crews unearthed a piece of history in downtown San Francisco this morning. Other work unveiled the massive foundations of what was the old San Francisco City Hall that was destroyed way back in the earthquake of 1906. Well, the wreckage of that old building and that big 300-foot dome really became a symbol for that earthquake. Workers discovered the site on accident while they were digging for a landscaping project earlier this month. Uh, so archaeologists and historians were notified to examine those ruins before construction crews could get back to work. And the Board of Supervisors in San Francisco is taking up the possibility of allowing some of the smallest apartments in the country. The city is set to vote any minute now on a proposal that would allow apartments as small as this one here, about 220 square feet. The space would include a bathroom, a kitchen, and a closet. The land's so expensive in San Francisco, yeah. they want to uh, break it up. Looks like a dorm room almost. <laughs> it does, really. Yeah. Probably go for about $2,000 <laughs> exactly. a month in San Francisco. <laughs> well, Vegas premieres tonight. The Real Sheriff sits down with 8 News Now, and we get his take on Dennis Quaid portraying him on the small screen. And celebrating Channel 8, the special honors two of our own received today, and we'll share the reasons why. Medical Breakthroughs on 8 News Now is brought to you by Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is Channel 8 News Now at 4. So right here on Channel 8 tonight, CBS plans to debut a new primetime show based on former Clark County Sheriff Ralph Lamb. In fact, it's a rare opportunity for someone to see their life played out on the small screen. And our own Paula Francis sat down with the sheriff for a one-on-one -on -one interview and got his thoughts about Dennis Quaid. What do you think of him portraying you? I think it's fine. I've looked everybody over, you know, from the big show in uh, Honolulu to... Uh, all of the guys that I, I could think of, and I just couldn't find somebody that could ride and someone could fight, and he boxes all the time, and he's got a ranch, and he certainly can ride a horse, and he kind of understands the West living in Texas. So I thought he fit in perfect. And he looks good in a hat. <laughs> Lamb told us the feel of the time is captured pretty well, too. He also believes someone could enforce the law now the same way he did then might be a little tougher. Yeah, Station Casinos is holding its own premiere mm -hmm. for the debut of the new CBS show Vegas. Our own George Knapp will be there to introduce his story on Ralph Lamb. And just a reminder, you can see Vegas right here on Channel 8 at 10 o'clock following the season premiere of NCIS and NCIS Los Angeles. And then stick around for 8 News Now at 11.
Also today, a UNLV Safe Community Partnership honored 8 News Now for excellence in reporting on traffic dangers this past year. And we want to boast about a couple of our co-workers a little bit. Reporter Petrania Poonswan was awarded for her continuous coverage of the community impact of deadly traffic crashes. Petrania told the audience the traffic deaths of three of her family members inspired her to highlight traffic dangers in Las Vegas. And the I-Team's Nathan Baca was honored for the I-Team's Roadmap to Safety series. The I-Team's coverage revealed problems also made some changes in traffic court. Judges now have to follow new procedures to avoid giving ticket breaks to repeat offenders. So way to go, Nathan and Petrania. Yeah, nice job. Too fat to fight. Today at 430, the troubling trend military officials are now calling a security risk. I've been all over this country, and I can tell you the people here are different. They're vibrant, they're active. They're alive. It's what makes Las Vegas one of a kind. Our people. 8 News Now with Shauna Karami and Kale Raymaker. Now, mornings are brighter. From prescriptions to pot, the changing trends in how our children are looking at drugs and the laws that make some drugs easier to abuse. A paint job, the concerns people like you have about crosswalks near the Las Vegas Convention Center and the plans the county put in place to fix them. And paying for college, barely into the start of the year, students everywhere are fretting steep student loan payments, the growing trend of growing broke, and the approaches for relief from both presidential candidates. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is Channel 8 News Now at 4.30. Good afternoon. Some $700,000 worth of marijuana now off the streets after Metro busted one of the most sophisticated grow operations they've ever encountered. Metro arrested 29-year-old Amos Cavallo on numerous felony charges in the bus last night, which was inside the gates of the Las Vegas Country Club. Police say even though it's upscale, it's exactly the type of place growers are looking for because it's some place folks would least expect. The rented home in the 800 block of Vegas Valley Drive was insulated with more than 200 plants inside. And this this isn't Cavallo's first run-in with the law. He was arrested last year in connection with a multi-million dollar grow in Nye County. Now, marijuana or pot remains the most commonly abused drug in all age groups. More people are using it or abusing it each year since 2008. On the flip side, uh, fewer young adults are reaching into the medicine cabinet for a high. Petronia Pulswan here now with more on this new report. Yeah, Denise and Paul experts say it's a problem of perception with more attention lately being put on the dangers of prescription drugs. They say some kids and teens now are turning away from that and in turn started using more pot, thinking that is not as risky. While well, a new government report called substance abuse shows a 14% drop last year in prescription drug abuse for people between the ages of 18 and 25. The Department of Health and Human Services says that's a good sign because these are the critical years as young people enter college and the workforce. But a local addition counselor said that doesn't mean that's the problem of prescription drugs from. is going away, especially here in Southern Nevada, where he still sees many teens and young adults raiding their parents' medicine cabinets for a quick fix. I'm a little surprised because prescription drugs is still the number one uh, drug that we are seeing in our admissions at Las Vegas Recovery Center. And oftentimes what we see is prescription drugs like Lortab or Oxycontin, which leads to heroin. I would say prescription drugs are more like used for remedies, like any ailments. Mm -hmm. They're prescribed, so obviously people think they're okay. Well, Mel Poe from the Las Vegas Recovery Center said that people under the age of 22 are especially vulnerable to the physical impact of marijuana because their brains are still developing in that time and the drug has a direct effect on that part of the body. And with the recent elimination of the D.A.R.E. program, experts say it's now more critical than ever for parents to be really vigilant when it comes to keeping prescription drugs away from kids and also to check what they do online because that's where many of these kids are now finding the drugs they're looking for. Yeah, and you talked to detectives today, gave you some ideas on how to how to look and see if your kids are, are, are accessing drugs on the internet? Right, because they're, you know, they're tricky. You know, and people who are trying to sell these drugs are tricky as well. So on a site like Craigslist, for example, these ads are posted. Of course, they're not using, like, prescription drugs for sale or pot or whatever. So they use code words, things like greens or trees. That stands for wow. pot. And really? snow, cocaine. Yeah. And vitamins, those are prescription drugs. So things parents can look out for for these kinds of things on, on the internet. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks, Petronia. You're welcome. 
Well, statewide campaign geared at uh, getting more people to register to vote online really seems to be working. In fact, the online effort has resulted in a double daily average of voter registrations since the first week of this new ad campaign. We're talking about an average of 550 new registrations per day. Now, you can register online at register to vote nv.gov or also there's a new voter registration Facebook app if that's easier for you uh, to vote online though you must be 18 years of age by election day which is November 6th and also have a valid Nevada driver's license the deadline to register by the way October 6th President Obama will be making yet another campaign stop in Las Vegas this weekend. A source is close to the campaign tell 8 News Now that he will be here Sunday for what they're calling a grassroots event. This will be the president's sixth visit to Las Vegas since the start of the year. The president isn't doing up much campaigning today. Instead, he's over at the United Nations, so we'll have more on that for you in just a moment. But uh, his Republican, meantime, rival, I should say, Mitt Romney, uh, is campaigning. Both he and his running mate, Paul Ryan, are in the battleground state of Ohio, and they are on the attack. His plan is to continue what he has done before. The status quo has not worked. We cannot afford four more years of Barack Obama. We're not going to have four more years of Barack Obama. Romney's wife, Ann Romney, will also make a visit to the Silver State on Thursday. She's going to be attending a rally at Bartley Ranch. Today, the president urged other world leaders to take a stand against violence in the Muslim world. Mr. Obama laid out his foreign policy priorities before the U.N. He condemned the attack in Libya that killed a U.S. ambassador and three others, including a former Navy SEAL from Henderson, Tyrone Woods. He called the video that ignited those protests crude and disgusting, and he asked for unanimous condemnation for the mob behind the murders. Today, we must reaffirm that our future will be determined by people like Chris Stevens and not by his killers. Today, we must declare that this violence and intolerance has no place among our United Nations. President Obama also pushed for an end to the regime of Syria's president. He also warned Iran that the world is growing impatient with secrecy surrounding the country's nuclear program, a program he says could threaten the elimination of Israel and economic stability across the world. Obesity isn't just a problem with our children or with adults in the Silver State. It's turning into a national security issue. New at 430, one in four young people are now so overweight they can't join the military. That's according to a new report from the advocacy group Mission Readiness. Part of the problem, they say, is the junk food and candy that kids eat every day. The Defense Department spends an estimated $1 billion every year on obesity-related medical care for active duty members, their families, and veterans. We have a stalled, uh, stalled car uh, tying up traffic over US 95 and Las Vegas Boulevard. Uh, Ken Smith up in Chopper 8 with uh, details on what's going on over there, Ken. Well, it was uh, blocking up traffic here, but they moved it on to the right-hand side. This is going to be on the 95. It's on northbound 95 right here approaching the Spaghetti Bowl at Las Vegas Boulevard. There's the car. Apparently, the people have left the vehicle. They abandoned it, so they put a little red tag on the front windshield. That means they'll have just about a short time uh, to remove the vehicle, or else the, uh, the, the the state will remove it for them. They'll, they'll tow it away. It is causing some delays, though, here on the 95 northbound. It delays back up right around Eastern Avenue. Also, earlier, video I shot from Chopper 8. This is going to be right on Blue Diamond eastbound, just approaching Interstate 15. Two cars and uh, possibly a school bus involved in the accident. The only thing we have 100% confirmed that apparently one of those vehicles actually struck and hit a pedestrian. The pedestrian's already been transported off to the hospital. We're still trying to gather more details. It doesn't appear that any students were injured in that accident. Assuming the bus was even involved, they possibly could have been just a witness here. But we still have heavy delays. You can see from our earlier video from Chopper, about a half mile back up from approaching Valley View, heading out to Interstate 15. And last but not least, let's take a live look at our fans camera if you're making your way up interstate 15 we do have some slow and go on northbound i-15 it's backed up from just approaching spring mountain now those heavy delays continue all the way up here to about where i'm at hovering live over the spaghetti bowl reporting live here over downtown las vegas i'm ken smith eight news now all right ken thank you uh worn off crosswalks the complaint we looked into and the work that will now happen at the urging of traffic anchor brian loftus and when they're going to get started on that restriping Medical Breakthroughs on 8 News Now is brought to you by Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada. If you're ever walking on the north end of the strip right near the convention center, chances are you've seen crosswalks that really need a paint job. Traffic anchor Brian Loftus took that message straight to Clark County, and now he's unveiling their plan in today's What's Driving You Crazy. 
Here's our question. There's three crosswalks that are in the corners of Desert Inn and Joe Brown at Swenson. These crosswalks are used daily by convention workers, exhibitors, and visitors. The crosswalks are faded and worn. They need to be repainted. Well, they will be spark. Clark County's Pavement Markings Unit Supervisor inspected the crosswalks at the intersection of Desert Inn and Joe Brown at Swenson, and he agreed with our viewer named Spark and determined they were in need of maintenance. The crew will refresh the markings, including repainting 60 crosswalk bars and four stop bars for a total of 432 square feet of reflective tape. The Mine Expo is at the convention center right now. And there were over 19,000 conventions held at LVCC in 2011 with over 4.8 million convention delegates. With all that pedestrian traffic, good to report that this will be refreshed. Now, what's driving you crazy? Send along your question to Traffic 8 at 8newsnow.com. Refreshed is always a good thing. Every weekday on 8 News Now this morning, Brian will help you steer through the maze of traffic. Well, Las Vegas is climbing the ladder. The growing trend when it comes to credit scores, what Aiden your side found out, is behind our improved rankings. And problems with the iPad, with growing use across the nation and in classrooms just about everywhere, the one incident that sparked outrage in one school district. You tonight, see how Sin City began. Howdy. The history of Las Vegas, inspired by the true story. There's a thousand foot neon wave about to crash down on us. Worrying ain't gonna stop it. The lawmen. Uh, let me escort you out. The mobsters. I believe in the spirit of cooperation. Action's good. The women who broke all the rules. Here's where you tell me I look nice. You look nice. Vegas, series premiere tonight, only CBS. Unemployment may be going up in our city, but our credit scores are getting much better. So eight on your side reporter Michelle Mortensen started looking into why Las Vegans are doing better. And she found out of 143 cities nationwide, Las Vegas is one of three that saw huge improvements of residents' credit scores. For years, Experian Credit Services has ranked Las Vegas as one of the top 10 worst cities in the country for credit scores, but we've gotten better. We've gotten off the list. In fact, Vegas has been named most improved. Out of 143 cities, we're now ranked 131st. And the average Las Vegan has a pretty good score now, coming in at 714. Last year, the average score was 709. So why such an improvement? Well, Experian says Las Vegans as a whole have lowered the balances on their credit cards, which is one of the best ways to improve your score. So this is significant that even in a tough economic climate, we are choosing to pay off and lower our debts. And experts say it's universally considered a good thing and could be a sign of recovery. And if you're wondering, folks in Minneapolis have the highest scores on average at 787. That's the best credit score in the city with the lowest or worst average is Harlingen, Texas with 688 credit score points. Michelle had more good news for us. The same survey showed that many local businesses are growing and thriving too. Well, after flight delays and cancellations, there might be some movement in the standoff between American Airlines and the company's pilots. Today, the pilots' union says a VP for American asked to resume negotiations on a new labor contract. Pilots are angry after a federal bankruptcy judge let the airline throw out their old contract. They claim with American setting new pay and work rules, it could lead to outsourcing to other careers other carriers, I should say. And when it comes to flying, we're all paying more to check our luggage. The airlines collected more than $1.7 billion in baggage fees. That was just during the first half of this year, and that is the largest amount ever. Delta bringing in the most money, followed by United Airlines. Airlines first started charging the fees, can you believe, only four years ago, and the cost just keeps going up. When it comes to money, the U.S. Post Office does not appear to be delivering the Postal Service financial situation, really looking pretty dire. There is a deadline Sunday to repay the federal government $5.6 billion to cover health care for retirees, but there's simply no way to pay that. This will be the second time the Post Office has defaulted on that payment. The first was last month. Even though there is a cash shortage, deliveries won't be impacted and employees will still get paid, by the way. After a couple of years of penny pinching, Americans spent more money last year. The Labor Department released a report today showing more of us opened up our wallets compared to 2010. There was an increase of more than 3%. Spending on gasoline jumped 25% because of those higher prices. Economic experts say the report shows finances are slowly recovering after that financial crisis that started back in 2008. 
A lot of school districts across the country provide laptops or iPads for how their students uh, do homework, but one parent in Indiana does not like the idea after what she caught her high school student doing. The mom who didn't want to be identified thought her daughter would only be allowed to download school-approved apps to her school-issued iPad, but that wasn't the case. My daughter downloaded some apps that I didn't approve of. Um, she downloaded some chats and was chatting with people that I just don't think that she should have been chatting with. Well, according to the school district's technology policy, the parents are the ones who are responsible for what their children do on the iPads. And any concerned parent can opt out if their child is bringing the iPads home and they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. Just the other day, you know, was a local, uh, uh, a local uh, district. Local schools yeah, received yeah, yeah. a bunch of iPads Thousands for the students. Thousands of them. Parents are thrilled. Uh huh. But they need, <laughs> they need always to the, watch. There's always the flip side. What the kids are doing. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. All right, we are watching uh, the forecast because, uh, Darren, even though the calendar says fall, it's still pretty warm out. Yeah, but today, though, really feels like fall for the first time the past uh, couple days here because today, uh, for the first time in 12 days, uh, temperatures are actually cooler than normal. So the past uh, a week, a week and a half, temperatures have been about four or five degrees above normal. Look at the uh, high so far today at only 88 degrees, and the normal high is 90. But here we go. High pressure is going to stick around here for another a week or so, and we're going to see temperatures kind of warm back up near that 100 degree mark as we head towards the weekend. So outside right now, it's nice. Nice and cool out there. We're at 88 degrees out at the airport. You can see the humidity very low at only 16%. Uh, uh, Lake Mead, you're at 90. East Mingo, East Washington, you're in the lower 90s. Uh, Fort Apache, upper 80s. The wind has reduced. We had the cold front that moved through uh, last night in through this morning. Remember yesterday we had gusts up near 20, 30 miles per hour. The cold front is moving farther away, so the winds are weakening, and that's not really a problem for us outside right now. El Dorado, you're at 89. Bruce and Owens, you're at 88 degrees. You head outside the valley. Upper 60s for Tonopah, uh, Caliente, you're at 79, Alamo, you're at 84, Prump, you're at 87. A little bit warmer down the south, you can see a lot from the current temperature at 96 degrees. So here's the setup for us, radar here, high pressure still in control. This ridge is not going to really budge at all for the next uh, five to seven days. And that's why, again, in the seven-day forecast, we're looking at temperatures in the mid to upper 90s as we head towards the weekend. As far as the rest of the nation, we got some uh, activity here over towards Denver, reports of some snow up towards Utah for uh, Brian head for the first time this season and then you head over towards the rest of the nation very quiet there until you head over towards uh, the Midwest here you got that cold front producing some scattered showers uh, through the Ohio Valley as far as temperature wise outside around the rest of the nation nice and cool Seattle at 66 Portland at 70 uh, Reno double sevens as well as Albuquerque obviously right now we're nice and cool in the upper 80s and really the rest of the country not too being too bad uh, you can see Chicago at 74 uh, a little bit cooler as you head down towards uh, New Orleans at 83. Look at New York and Boston currently only in the upper 60s. All right, so back here at home tonight, upper 60s by tomorrow morning under mostly clear skies. The forecast for tomorrow will be stunning, really, with a high of 91 degrees with lots of sunshine and great air quality as well. And then you have to take a look at the 7 day forecast, and it's going to be a little bit warmer than normal. Thursday, 93. Uh, Friday, 94. And then back in those mid to upper 90s, just in time for the weekend. And again, the first day of October is Monday, forecasting a high of 98. It is fall, it feels nice outside and no chances for any rain, a great air quality, just a little bit warmer than normal, but uh, all in all though, it looks pretty nice. What a bad forecast. Very good, okay. thank you, Darren. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, another closure set to happen tomorrow night, uh, airport connector to tell you about. Kent Smith and Shop Parade with more on that. Yeah, many of us got surprised last night when they shut it down here, the southbound side of the airport connector transition ramp to the eastbound 215. You don't have to worry about it tonight, but the, but then tomorrow night, you're going to have to deal with it again starting at about 9 o'clock. These southbound lanes right here, as you can see from our live shot, as you go out of the tunnel and make the transition to the eastbound 215, that'll be shut down between 9 p.m. and about 5 a.m. Thursday morning. Same story for eastbound 215 to the northbound airport connector. It's part of the widening project here for the 215 freeway. You can see some of that scaffolding there underneath the 215 itself. That's part of the widening project where eventually they're going to have to redo that bridge and that's part of the reason why we have so many closures down here at the airport connector. Got a minor crash here this afternoon here. This is going to be right at the intersection of Pecos McLeod at Twain. You can see them right in the police report there with Metro on the scene. Not so minor for that particular vehicle though. You can see some of the uh, uh, damage to that truck. If you're going to be traveling southbound or northbound, you're going to have to move around the accident. Northbound traffic has to stay to the left to get by. Reporting live here over the airport, I'm Ken Smith, 8 News Now.
All right, Ken, thanks. Uh, paying for college, these steep debts so many college graduates are finding themselves in, and the two different plans from the presidential candidates to help relieve that burden. Victims of foreclosure may be able to collect. Tonight at 5, the I-Team walks you through the steps to take if you're owed money from that multi-state foreclosure settlement. first choice for news. This is Channel 8 News now at 4.30. It is hard to pay for college these days and it can be a huge challenge for students and their parents. So this year the presidential election has really focused a lot on how to help the middle class pay for higher education. Christine Romans talks with one graduate who shows just how squeezed out the middle class really is. When Jackie Giovanello graduated from Brown University this year, she put off going straight to medical school. Instead, she took a research job at Sloan Kettering Hospital. It is nice to have a paying job where I can pay back part of my student loans before going to med school and possibly adding on a lot more. And she had plenty of them, $100,000 worth. Why? Her family is middle class. Her mother works in a school. Her dad owns a bar. She says they're considered too wealthy to qualify for many grants, but she says not wealthy enough to have saved the money for the more than $50,000 a year to attend Brown. Where you're in the middle class, you are a normal suburban family, but you just don't make it an outrageous amount of money, so you can't pay for these outrageous prices for tuition, you know? She's not alone. Student loan debt hit a trillion dollars last year. Even tuition for public four-year colleges rose 68% over the last decade. Enter the presidential campaign with college affordability a key issue for younger voters. And I want to make college more affordable for every young person who has the initiative and drive to go and make sure they're not burdened by thousands of dollars worth of debt. President Obama has expanded Pell Grants and cut out the banks as middlemen for loans, allowing students to borrow directly from the government. Now Obama proposes to slow tuition growth by increasing state grants. Yet, he'd need Congress to help fund that. I'm not going to go out and promise all sorts of free stuff that I know you're going to end up paying for. What I want to do is give you a great job so you'll be able to pay it back yourself. Mitt Romney's plan to help students remove burdensome regulations and get the government out of the student loan business. Romney says the flood of federal dollars just drives up tuition. Christine Roman, CNN, New York. The recession's heavy toll on state budgets is also a factor. It's because the tendency, they say, is to increase tuition to help balance the budget. A last-second Seahawks touchdown as fans and players up in arms. Now at 5, the fallout from last night's controversial call.